Hello, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you go about cleaning out this Valiant filter. And I'll do that in a step-by-step -step process so it's nice and easy to follow. Now also, if you want to add some chemicals to your system, like inhibitor, I'll show you how you can easily add it into this filter so you don't have to do any draining down or anything. If you have this glow one filter, then stick around because the cleaning process is exactly the same as the Valiant filter. Now this filter is fitted on a Valiant EcoFit Pure combination boiler. Now if you want to know how to operate that boiler, then I made a separate video all about doing that. And I go through how to set the hot water temperature, the optimum temperature for your central heating, what the comfort setting is, and of course how to top that boiler up. And of course you'll find that video down below. And also if you have that 24 hour time clock, then I've also made a video about how to set that and adjust that. And again, you'll find that in the description below as well. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video where I go through some important information about topping up your boiler and also the direction of flow. Right, let's quickly whiz through my intro then get on with showing you how to clean out this filter. And don't forget, check out my website where I've categorized all my videos and I've left links to all the products and parts that I recommend. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and that will also help others to find the video. If you think this video is useful, then click on that subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Right, now let's get on with the video. All the links throughout this video can be found in the description below, at the end of the video or in the cards above. Now here's our Valiant EcoFit boiler which has just been installed and here's the filter underneath. Installing this filter with the boiler gives this boiler a 10 year parts and labor guarantee as long as it gets registered on the Valiant Advanced Scheme and I think that's well worth having. Before I isolate the filter I want to make sure that the central heating is turned off. You can see the central heating icon is flashing in the display so I'm going to turn that off on the time clock here. The central heating icon will then go out like that so now I know the heating is off. But ideally we want to turn the boiler off so if we press the reset button on our EcoFit that will then turn the boiler off and you can see the display has now gone out. If you're not sure how to switch your boiler off then just switch it off from the mains power supply. The next thing we need to do is to isolate the filter. We need to turn the big butterfly valve off on the pipework and also the valve on the boiler. I'm going to isolate the valve on a pipework first so all I need to do is to just turn that around so it goes across the pipework. When it's across the pipework like that the valve is turned off. Now I need to isolate the valve on the boiler. Now it's a good idea just to follow your pipework to make sure that you are shutting the correct valve and there we go that's the central heating return valve and I just need to isolate that. Now I always use a small adjustable spanner because these valves can get quite tight but you can use a large flat headed screwdriver. And again you can see when the screwdriver slot is across the pipework the valve is closed and when it's in line with the pipework it is open. Now both our valves are closed we can now drain the filter and we do that by using this valve here and the drain point there. And of course make sure you've got a bowl handy to catch the water. Now we're going to remove that drain plug cap and just watch out because you might get some water coming out and there we go just unscrew that we now need to open up this valve here now we need a five mil hexagonal bit i just pop that in my screwdriver now you can use a large flat headed screwdriver to undo this valve and just watch out because when you loosen this off you'll suddenly get a gush of water and there we go that's the pressure now released from the filter but that's not all the water released the filter is still full of water I'm now going to need to undo this large threaded collar. Now when you undo this watch out because the filter is quite heavy and it might just drop off. Also watch out because if it's hot you might scold yourself with really hot water. Now I just need to completely undo this. There we go. That's now undone. Now this seems to be staying where it is but be careful because it might just drop off and it is really heavy. Now get your bowl ready. Give it a little wiggle and then watch out and there we go a big gush of water now you can just lift that away now watch out because this may be quite dirty and you don't want to go dripping dirty black water all over your carpet so just be careful with that now i'm going to just remove this stainless steel gauze and then down inside there is the magnet and we can see there's some magnetite 
on the magnet. Now this white piece is a sleeve and it does just pull off. I kind of think over time this might get quite tight, but that does just pull off like that. And you can see there's the black magnetite all over that white sleeve. Now this system was really thoroughly flushed, but you can still see with old radiators, you can never get rid of all that magnetite. Now I'm just gonna wash it all off in the sink. You can see that's a stainless steel gauze there, and you can see there's some black on there. So I'm just gonna wash that off. And there we go. Now I kind of think over time, this might well get blocked up. So make sure this gets cleaned out regularly. But I think it is a really good idea and it will definitely stop large bits which might break off the system from going into the boiler. Now here's the white plastic sleeve. I'm just gonna wash that off. And you can see there's only a little bit of magnetite on there. But there we go, that's nice and clean. Now here's the magnet inside the filter. So if yours is dirty, make sure you give that a clean because you don't want that sleeve getting stuck on the magnet. Now I just push the sleeve down onto the magnet. It is a little tight on the end. Like I said, I can see that getting stuck over time. And then the stainless steel gauze just fits into a little recess like that. Now, before I go fitting this back onto the filter, I'm gonna remove the gauze and I'm gonna take off the little O-ring here because that O-ring is the bit which does all the sealing. And if that gets dry or dirty, then it's gonna start leaking. So we just take that off there and you can see it's only a thin little O-ring. So now I'm gonna give that a good old clean and then put some silicon grease on it. So first of all, I'm gonna get a bit of kitchen roll and just clean it off. Just make sure that there's no bits of dirt on there because any tiny little bits of dirt can cause it to leak. But there we go, that looks nice and clean. Now we also wanna make sure that the filter is clean. So the groove where the seal fits. So again, I'm gonna get a bit of kitchen roll and make sure that is nice and clean. So give that a good old wipe off. Now over time, you will find there'll be bits of magnetite in there. So make sure that's nice and clean. Now I'm gonna get my silicon grease. I'm gonna get a good old blob of that. I'm gonna wipe it all over the rubber O-ring. So there we are, just wipe that around there because I want to make sure that's nice and greased up because that will stop it from leaking. It'll also make it last longer. So it will extend the life of the O-ring. I'll see if I can find a part number for that O-ring and then leave it in the description. And there we go, you can see that's nicely greased up now. And now I'm just gonna slip it on over the top onto the filter. And again, just give that little wipe around once again, I'm just going to use a bit of extra grease and just wipe that around the filter like that. So it makes a good seal because I don't want any leaks. Now I can just refit the stainless steel gauze like that. And there we go. That's now ready to be refitted. Now, before I go fitting the filter, I want to make sure this inside surface here is nice and clean. Again, this is where the O-ring seals. So we want to make sure that that surface there is nice and clean. So we're going to give that a wipe off. And then also I'm gonna get some silicon grease and just wipe that around on the inside there so that the seal is gonna make a good seal and I'm definitely not gonna get any leaks like that. And there we go, that's nice and greased up, ready to refit the filter. Now I'm gonna refit the filter. Be careful when you're putting it in because you don't wanna damage that stainless steel gauze. So just carefully slip it in and then make sure that you push it all the way in and it goes right up to that stainless steel ring. And then we can put the nut on and do that up. Now don't do this up mega tight, you're just doing up hand tight because the O-ring will do all the sealing. So you're just doing that up so it's holding the end of the filter in place. I'm now gonna close the drain valve on the end of the filter. Now don't do this up really tight, again, just nip it up. Now the filter is completely full of air and we don't really want that air going up into the system. Now to get rid of all that air in the filter, I'm gonna rotate the filter around so the drain point now is pointed up. I thought I'd just add, if you want to add some inhibitor into your system, you could also add it into the filter when it's in this position. According to the instructions, it will hold half a litre of liquid. So you could get your pot of inhibitor and carefully pour it into the top of the filter. And that would also take out all the air. Just depending on the amount of inhibitor you may have, you might need to go through this process a couple of times, running the central heating in between to circulate the inhibitor into the system. But going back to cleaning the filter, we now want to open the valve up that goes into the bottom of the filter. 
Now your filter might be in a different orientation and the butterfly valve might be at the bottom of the filter. So it'll be that valve you would want to open up first. With this filter, it's the boiler valve which goes into the bottom of the filter. So I'm gonna open that up and then I hear some noise as the water goes into the filter. And then I'm gonna open that valve all the way up. So it's then fully open like that. I'm then gonna take my screwdriver and put it into the valve and slowly open it up. Now when I open that, I'm gonna start hearing some air as the air starts coming out of the drain point. And then I'm gonna get some water coming out. And I just wanna make sure that all the air is out. So that seems about right. I'm gonna close that up now. And now we've got out as much of the air as possible. Now, if you wanna turn this back round again so the drain valve is pointing downwards, you'll find you won't be able to turn that because of the pressure which is now in the filter. So I'll first need to close the valve on the boiler and then open a valve on a filter to let the pressure out of the filter. And they can then close it back up again. I should then be able to rotate the filter around without any problem at all. And there you go. So you can just turn that round. So it's on the bottom now. I can just nip up that screw a little bit more like that. I'm just going to get a cloth just to grip that a little bit better and just tighten that up so it doesn't accidentally come undone. And there we go. I can now just screw the cap back onto the bottom of the drain point like that. You don't need to do this really tight again, just hand tight. I'm just going to make sure that that's nipped up, which it is. And then I can just open both these valves up again. So we're going to open the one on the boiler first like that. There we go, that's fully open. And now I can now open up the butterfly valve like that. And there we go, that one's now fully open. And that's it, that's how you go about cleaning the Valiant filter. Now, before you start this job, you want to check how much pressure you've got in your boiler. Because you saw in the video that you're gonna lose half a liter of water from your system. So after you finish cleaning your filter, you're gonna need to top your boiler back up again. So before you start this job, make sure that you know how to top your boiler back up again and make sure that the relevant valves turn okay. Because you don't want to finish doing this job and then find that your boiler stopped working and you've got an F22 fault code in the display telling you you need to top your boiler back up again. Now, if you're not sure how to top your boiler back up again, then of course I've made videos for all the Valiant boilers and you can find those all on my website where I've categorized them and made them all easy to find. As this is the Ecotech Pure Boiler, I've left links to top this boiler up in the description below and you'll find it at the end of this video in just a second. Now all we need to do is just put the boiler back on and just run the heating and make sure any air has been bled out of any radiators. Just one final note, on a boiler recently, I found that this filter was installed the wrong way around. You can see there's a big arrow on there. So just make sure that if you're installing yourself or you've got one yourself, that the arrow is pointing in the right direction obviously in the direction of the flow. And as this one is on the return pipe, this one is flowing back towards the boiler. Right, that's about it then. So I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If you wanna watch my next video, then you can click on the link just here. And if you found my video helpful in any way, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. And like I said, that will help others to find your video. And if you enjoyed the video, then you can click on subscribe. And if you wanna receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which I hopefully help you. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time.